So for the last few weeks, I've been testing out the mullet setup on my enduro bike. So in this video, I thought it'd be cool to share a bit about what my first impressions have been like, the pros, the cons, who it's for and who it's not for. So if you're familiar with the mullet setup, it's where you've got big wheel on the front, smaller wheel on the back. It's kind of a common trend at the minute, but it's not actually a new thing. I think it was a couple of years ago when Specialized actually released, I think they had the big hit, which had a 24 inch rear wheel and a 26 inch wheel on the front. And nowadays though, we actually run a 29 on the front and a 27.5 wheel on the back. So first things first, this is my Vetus Summit. It has been a 29er front and rear setup now since I've had the bike. I've never tested mixed wheel sizes. I've always been, it's either one or the other. It's either run a 29er front and rear or you run 27.5 front and rear. I've never really been a fan of mixing wheel sizes just because then you have to have two of everything. So like different size tires, different size tubes, different size inserts. So I just thought it was just beneficial just to stick with one wheel size over the other. However, the past few weeks, I've been pretty blown away. So the good thing about this bike is that it has a flip chip. So that means you can flip a little chip, it changes the geometry and it allows you to run different wheel sizes or a mixed wheel size. Not all bikes have this ability, so you can't just stick a smaller 27.5 wheel on any bike. You'll screw up the geometry if the bike hasn't been designed with that in mind. I actually did a video on the channel a while ago where I put a small wheel on the back of my 29er bike. It didn't really work out. It messed all the geometry up. It was good at a few things like going in a straight line and feeling like you were a bit more stable if you like, but for the majority of things, it was useless. Like my bottom bracket was hitting the floor, my pedals were hitting off rocks and everything. And it just wasn't in a very efficient way of riding. So nowadays, a lot of bike companies have incorporated these little geometry changing things like being able to flip a chip or being able to adjust the, the wheelbase on the rear of the bike so you can put a mixed wheel size on there. So what we'll do is we'll jump into some of the pros and the cons as well of what I've found so far with the mixed wheels. And then I'll give you my verdict on who I think the bike is best suited for. So when it comes to pros, the first big thing obviously is a wheel clearance or you know clearance in general because you've got a smaller rear wheel on the back which means you've got more clearance in the frame from like mud clearance. You also have more clearance from tire to like saddle height. So let's say for instance, you're riding like a steeper trail or even drops or anything like that, where you have to get your body weight and your ass over the back of the saddle off the back of the bike. The rear wheel is gonna give you more clearance. Obviously, if you've got a 29er bigger wheels, there's probably more chance of you buzzing your ass on the tire and stuff like that, which I have experienced in the past. Doing drops and steep trails like that, I've not experienced any of that so far with the smaller rear wheel. Cornering is obviously a big part of mountain biking. With the smaller wheel size, I have definitely felt a difference in how confident I feel overall in throwing the bike into a corner, feeling more balanced on the bike and finding grip and coming out the other side of the corner at a better speed. The bike becomes a little bit more livelier as well. So in tighter corners where a bigger 29er bike would probably feel like you are trying to turn a barge around a corner, the mullet setup seems to be a little bit more snappy. So on some of the wide open corners, I did feel I was a bit more comfortable at the higher speed stuff, basically because my body was balanced more evenly over the bike. That could just be my position on the bike that's been adjusted by the wheel size and the fact that I've lowered my stem slightly as well. Because obviously if you put a smaller rear wheel on the back of the bike, that is going to adjust the geometry slightly of the bike. I think it's gonna make the bike a little bit shorter if you don't do anything to the, the cockpit area. So I lowered the spacers and my stem just to try and make the, the bike a little bit longer in the reach. So from like my, my chest over to my handlebars. And I think that's actually helped me position myself better over the bike, which is why I'm feeling more confident when it comes to throwing the bike into corners. Obviously as well, because you've got that shorter wheelbase and smaller rear wheel, the bike is way easier to manual. When you're pulling up to a manual or a wheelie, the bike comes up a lot faster. I personally find it easier to find my balance point to sit there in that manual or in that wheelie or whatever I'm doing on the back wheel. So what about jumps? What is the mullet bike like once it's airborne in the air? One of the first rides I did was at Dovey Bike Park on the mullet bike. If you've ever been to Dovey Bike Park, you'll know that they have some seriously big jumps there. Tabletops, big drops. It was a really good test. The only thing was that we couldn't do some of the bigger jumps like the Oakley line because there was too much wind that day. But I did get a chance to try it out on 50 hits, which is a fairly big tabletop line. The bike did feel more maneuverable in the air. 
I guess the only way to describe it is me feeling more comfortable and confident once I'm in the air. It was a little bit different riding the bike, so like pushing into takeoffs and actually riding jumps, that was a little bit of a learning curve to get used to because I've been only riding jumps on the 29 on this thing, so that was a little bit different to get used to. So rocky square edge hits and anything that's like really janky you'd come across on a trail. With the mixed wheel size, I personally feel that the front wheel, because of its size, you do have a lot more control in the steering over those janky obstacles and the rear wheel just tends to follow. What about cons? Let's look at the other side of the coin because if I just talked about pros and how good the mullet would be all day, then it'd be a pretty biased one-sided video. So there are some drawbacks I've found. So obviously not all bikes are made to go mullet. This one is obviously got its flip ship and stuff like that. And so you can change that 29 or all mullet set up, no problems, but not every bike has that capability. If you want to try a mullet bike out, but you only have a bike that is made for 27.5 wheels or 29er wheels, you're obviously gonna have to get a new frame or look at a new frame. So things can get a bit costly, a bit expensive. So that's one of the drawbacks. Another drawback I found so far riding it is it doesn't climb as efficiently on steep climbs or even just uphill in general. I actually feel on some of the more mellower, like fire road climbs, I definitely feel the 29er wheel size is more efficient at climbing up hills, just because of the bigger size of the wheels. And then when it comes to really, really steep techie climbs, I definitely feel as well the 29er is better suited for that stuff as well. And again, it's not really a major drawback, but if you make your bike a mullet, like I did with mine, it made the reach shorter. So essentially like, this distance in the cockpit length. You're bringing the back end up slightly, so it's obviously making the, the reach shorter. To combat that, I actually lowered my stem to increase that reach slightly and get my body weight more over the front of the bike. So should you test a mullet bike? That's probably the question. If you feel like you're outgunned on a 27.5 bike at the minute, or maybe you've got a 29er and you feel like <laughs> it's a little bit big to maneuver, let's say, which a lot of people feel like, that's probably a good spot to be in to test one of these mullet bikes. I mean, anyone can try them out. I'm not saying like it's for short people, tall people, people who don't like big wheel sizes, small wheel sizes. It's definitely worth trying to mix wheel size on a bike. And I think you'd be quite surprised when you do, or if you do try it, because I've been quite blown away because I literally was stuck in that thought process that mixed wheels is just a, a gimmick, a fad, it's pointless to try. Why would you want a mixed wheel size on a bike, either have one or the other? But as soon as I jumped on this, I was a bit like, okay, fair enough. There is weight behind what people are saying. And the fact that people are still using mullet bikes and mullet setups for downhill racing, which is kind of like the Formula One of mountain biking, it obviously still holds merit, especially if you're trying to get from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill, down the trail in the fastest time possible. Like it, there must be something about a mullet setup that the guys in the downhill racing the highest level still use mullet spot there must be a reason why if you have got the opportunity to test a bike that is mixed wheel I highly highly recommend it because it could be like the key to unlocking more speed better skill on your bike and more fun i mean that's why we all ride right we all want to go out and ride bikes to have fun and so these things can put a bloody smile on our face yeah if you've got any questions about mullet bikes or what your viewpoints are or anything like that, just pop them in the comments below. Curious to hear what everyone else has to say about them, whether you think they're a fad, if you think it's the best thing since sliced bread, pop them in the comments, we'll get a conversation going. Hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one.